Oh, man. What's up, guys? It's Jamie Gonzalez. I'm Shad Stoker. What up, brother? Born detailers in full effect. We're out here. Another one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah, we're here, we're here, guys. What's up, brother, man? How are you doing? I'm good, man. Busy. Right, dude, Super busy. Dude, right off the bat, I'm asking ChatGBT right now, what's the most important... Um, what is the most important... Uh, expensive? Ex yeah, most, ex most expensive... Most Par expensive part of a vehicle. Let's see what they say. It says the engine, but it's not the engine, bro. It's not the engine. No, it's not the engine. It's not the, it's it's, not the engine. It, it's definitely what? It's the paint, man. It's the paint. Yeah, dude, the paint. The most expensive part of your vehicle is the paint because to match factory finish, to make it like factory, bro, it's, it's unmatched. Yeah. It would cost you... Can dig it down the streets, charge you $100,000 for a paint job. Yeah. I mean, it, and that's obviously they're doing fabrication. Yeah, yeah. But, bro, to strip it, remove everything, to tear apart, to do, preserve, to make your car perfect, back factory, dude, it's thousands. Not a new even motor that. is probably it, 10 grand. Like, it, installed, like a nice one, whatever. So I think I had my Tacoma new motor put in from Toyota. It was like eighty five hundred bucks. Not not just back to factory from the factory. It yeah. costs more for them to put paint to oh, paint the yeah. vehicle than it costs them to put an engine in the car. The paint's the most expensive part. That's why clear coats have changed, like we've talked about in the past. That's why they changed because it's such a hang up for them when they have to hold it for. And obviously, maybe this says electric batteries too. You know, well, if, yeah, if you're like, if and that, that's Tesla. that's because it ain't got an engine. Yeah, yeah. so whatever. But chat cheap, chat. Man, the, man, it's just whatever, it's bro. just Google. I mean, we know. Yeah. Anyways, no, you're right though. It, that is right. They don't. They're not putting into consideration of you know of paint. Because they don't, they probably don't consider that a part. They're thinking part like a moving part. Your, 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 the paint, the vehicle on the paint is the most expensive thing on most vehicles, on your standard, your standard vehicles. And then we're we're, we're called on to care for those. You know what I mean? And then yeah, you go yeah. ha hack at it with a bunch of bullshit that you, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. Aren't reading the paint? Aren't are not are not measuring the paint? You know what I mean? You're not like doing your test spots. You just go hack at it. And, and leave the customer one, one, you know, they start at three mils, which is already, which yeah, is already nothing. low to begin that's with. Nothing. Yes. Then you leave them with one and you're, you're not thinking about that. You're not thinking about the next detail. You're not thinking about the paint failing. Like you may have a, a ceramic coating on the clear coat now, but if there's, you know, one mil of clear left on there, one mil of total, total volume, that's going to fail regardless in, in a couple years. All right. So if you were going to make an ad, so everyone has mm. an ad when you click onto your, when you click onto your, you're running a sponsored ad on your Google AdWords, what are the top three things that you would that you would put on your page, on on your front page of your ads? Yeah, that's to, that's to wrap in the customer to get a customer in. What would you want? To, what would you say if you do? Well, without giving the sauce, man. I mean, the thing is, is you no, no, man. You give all the sauce, bro. People don't use yeah. the sauce. So bro. if it was me, that's exactly what I, my landing page would be. How interested are you in preserving the most expensive part of your vehicle? Because most customers don't know that. So instantly, when they read that, they're like, "Whoa, I was just here for a ceramic coating. What I didn't? What's the most expensive part? What is this? You know what I mean? And they're gonna click on that just because they're they have to know what that is. Because customers don't know, consumers don't know that. Right, yeah. so you have to you have to ask a question that leads them down a rabbit hole. Right, like think about it. Think about when you how many times so, you start googling something that you want to know, and you just go further and further and further. Before you know it, you're four hours deep, and it's four in the morning. Then you know what I mean. You had googling shit for hours. So would you would you go in there and be like, tell them like how you're certified or how all this stuff or how you have the greatest yes. product would you do yes that? but i would do it after i created so much <clears throat> scarcity that that's where it's important if i just go ahead and say hey i'm great i'll have all this it means nothing right mm -hmm. they don't care about that but if i say if i like oh worry about this worry about this i mean without being without using scare tax but it's like if you if i raise enough concerns in their mind to where it's like all right now this is why this is important if you say hey i'm a certified detailer well why do they care about that if you say man this 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 and this and I'm a certified detailer, like, I gotta use this guy because of all these things, but you have to ask them questions. You can't tell them. This is where a lot of uh, people mess up in sales in general. They say this and this, and let me tell you this, let me tell you how great this is. And let me you ask questions. When, you, when, when I tell you something, it means nothing. If I get yeah. you to tell me something, you're like, that's right. You know what I mean? Like, if I ask you a question, you're like, you know, 
your answer is, oh, I need a ceramic coating. If I say you need a ceramic coating, you're like, fuck you, I don't. But if I get you to say, I need a, you need, you tell me that you need a ceramic coating, mm. it's locked. You said it, so now it's true. So now you're gonna get it no matter what, right? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's building credibility by asking questions and then hitting them with the credentials. Then saying, well, this is why it's important that I have. So who, who, who is the main person besides, I would say, because I feel like most ceramic coatings, there's a lot of enthusiast type people that you deal with on ceramic coatings. Who's the main target Target for a ceramic coating, would you say? I would say like like people that use their car the most, like truck guys, mm -hmm. stay at home, like moms, people that are in and out of the vehicle. But I don't, I don't, I, those kind of people, I don't really, I guess we do quite a bit of trucks, but I don't see a lot of daily driver people when those are the people that actually need, to, need it the most right Which you're right saying. but they're not educated they don't realize they don't need it the, the the value isn't built on why they need it right if i if i if if if, if, a, if a soccer mom comes in and she's like oh man i want it you know i want easier maintenance and you're like well let me tell you about the gloss and we're gonna get the scratch down we're gonna do this and we're gonna do all that and she's like that's not, I, I want i want to not have to wash my car more you know what i mean like mm -hmm. it's you have to ask questions based off of what that customer needs but that's like we don't do that enough. We talk about we talk about the benefits so much, but we don't ask qualifying questions. You have to find a problem to solve. Me telling you, I'm gonna make your car glossy and I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. That's not solving a problem because you may not care about your car being glossy. If I ask you, hey, what about this? What about that? And you're like, oh, well, man, you know, I really just, I, I, I don't have time to clean it, but I also use my vehicle for work, so it has to look good. So I, I need it to look good, but I don't have the time to spend on it. Well, let me tell you why a ceramic coating is perfect for you. But you've built, you've created, you've, you've found Bro, a you're problem. Just, dude, you're a monster salesman, though. Bro, I've, I've developed this skill. Like, this is, I have spent tens of thousands <laughs> yeah. of dollars. Yeah, I know, but I'm just skill, saying, you know? I don't think even if you didn't spend $10,000 yeah. or whatever amount of money you spend that you'd be this good. It's yeah. an, like, there's people that have it, and then there's people that don't. There's people, you know, it's the same thing. It's like when you, there's just work, there's just types of people it's in that thing. I was like, man, bro, like, sales is it, it sells it's all in the sale and, and it's sad to say that a lot of detailers focus on their skills and how good they are at what they do but reality is the person that's down the street that is killing it that has packed shops and he's just doing living the good life it's nothing to do with his skill like it's nothing to do with how good they are doing a car right it's, it's the all, value. it's it, the back end yeah it's, it's the all value the back that they end. add in what they do yeah it's like all right they're branding and then like gold mouth, like they had just the mouth, bro. The mouthpiece is just crazy. So like they just have that game to spit at people and slightly back it up, especially when you're doing coding. It's like I was doing, speaking about, we didn't even talk about what we were doing this weekend. I did a video with Rick and Nick for DIY. And the way, oh, yeah. I, the way I detail is, is how pros detail. So, but the people he is, that he's selling to, it's someone at home that doesn't understand and it's like they're so scared of a polisher they're so right. they're talking about swelling the paint because they, you know it's like they just and automatically it's just like bro like you guys you guys overthought it you know some mm -hmm. of them you not know, everyone but some people just overthink it but realistically on their side it's like they just got you know sales and branding people that are crushing it and you see someone down the street and you're mad because they're busy it's like no they're not focusing on how good they can polish yeah a lot of the problem with that is is people will hear something once and they'll take it as gospel especially mm -hmm. if they think that it's coming from a reputable source like they google it or they hear someone that they think is reputable reputable says it so they hear something like oh that's true without validating that validating it themselves if i hear something i'm like that sounds true i am going to validate you do it. research i'm yeah. like that too yeah like, i I'm just gonna, don't i just don't or validate it myself i'm yeah. gonna go test it you know what i mean actually sh see that that's mm -hmm. real or not before i start speaking because the last thing that i'm going to put myself in a situation is to put my foot in my mouth and if i say oh you're you're gonna swell the paint and you're like well i've been doing this for 20 years and let me actually tell you what it is then i'm gonna look like an and asshole what it actually like what it takes to swell paint right. or it takes to burn through or what it takes to you know whatever you know whatever when it comes to painting mm -hmm. or detailing or like what chemicals you're using it's like dude i've messed up so much jobs like over the you know years and that's that's was my lessons like mm -hmm. i didn't i took that as lessons you know what i mean i didn't take it as like it didn't break me down you know it's like no oh man i did that oh i'm not gonna do that again right. why why did it why did that happen yeah. why you know so you learn from anyways it. so the premise of all this was you can't be mad 
if you're only focusing on one thing in this business or detailing game and obviously it, it, enthusiast too it's like you're it, it's only gonna go so yeah, far yeah for sure like you have to learn obviously you have to learn how to add value in the detail but you have to learn how to add value in the services that you provide. And when I say add value, you have to create that value in the customer's mind. You have to be able to, to communicate, to articulate that value. It's like, if I just sell you something, if I sell you a new pair of shoes, you know what I mean? It means nothing. If I sell you a new pair of shoes that is gonna fix the back problem you've had for 10 years because your, your one foot is shorter than the other, that means something. But if I don't ask questions to find out why you want the new shoes, I can't solve that problem. And then also knowing how to reiterate it. All right, here's your problem. Here's your solution. And here's why it works. Here's, here's why I know it works and how it's going to work for you. Right? So people just, yeah, they, again, we talk about this a lot, but they focus so much on the detailing side of it and not enough on becoming a business owner, becoming a business yeah, person. Because to, to me, it's like doing the work is the easy part. Mm -hmm. Like doing a paint correction and the coding and doing like at a high level. That's to me, that's the fun part. Yeah. So it's like, dude, I don't know how much people man bro we're busy as hell over here yeah so it's crazy you, you pulling this parking yeah, lot yeah, it's yeah. if you come over here it's not it this is back end work it's not yeah we right you've laid the groundwork you yeah. you you run this as a business that's why you have four buildings and you you are where you are because you've ran it like a business and you've developed not only your your mechanical skills your detailing skills but your business skills i say this time and time again business wise there's not many detail operations that i that are even anywhere near as savvy as you and i say savvy it's, it's cultivated you've learned these things you've um educated yourself but then you found partners people that know what you don't know that can do things that you can't do right if you can't if you can't be a good salesman if you just don't have the knack for it or you're not willing to put the time in find somebody that can partner up with somebody that has that skill set that you don't have you know what i mean like we just we just rest on our laurels and we think that oh we can we can shine paint so that's all we need to be a good detailer no nah, man that's yeah but and then and then you get, get a the job. guy that only can shine paint and he thinks it's it's to solve all and it's nothing no you know I it can, doesn't yeah anybody I, can bro anybody can do it but hey let's focus on our self branding and not be asses you know what I mean yeah learn how you know learn I mean? how to add value in the cell learn how to communicate value and articulate it and make your customers leave here feeling like man this guy just saved my life. Like, you know, not realistically, but like, like this guy just added so much value in my life. He gave me my time back with my kids and he gave me this. Now I'm not going to have to do this. It, that's, that's where you get customers that, that come back for life. Dang, man. Add you value. Add value. Hey, if any of you guys need any coaching, sales coaching, mentorship or anything like that, man, Shad's right here. You know, big mentor, yeah. big, you know, big part of who I am. But hey, we're out here full effect. I'm Jamie Gonzalez. I'm Shad Stoker. You already know. Yeah, yeah. yeah.